Saluton, parolas Tomaso. Hi, everybody. This is going to be another mixed language live stream where I try to sort of marathon through answering questions on the forum that have accumulated in my folder here. I want to let people know that um, starting tomorrow, I will, my, today's my wife's last day at work uh, until she starts her vacation. And then we will be working on packing and driving to NOSC, and then we'll be at NOSC for a while. So the plan for the next, I don't know how many, is to do hopefully daily live streams, um, starting out with trying to get through some Duolingo questions to start, and then maybe um, sort of a continuation of what I've done last year in the um, daily recap of what's, what's been going on at NOSC and what people have been learning and that sort of thing. Um, those will probably be in Esperanto. So if you're here for the Esperanto, though, Sevi estos dieci por la Esperanto en Havo, mi petas vian pacienson, atento la viva en el sendoin, kiwin mi el sendos dum nasc, chartio presca certe estos en Esperanto, aut cent el cente en Esperanto, que mi havas multain alia en aferoin por Montreal vi en la venonta y semaino, y sed uh, mi personas tempon por munti tiu in filmetoin. Cae in la venonta e numinestias du semaino e mi estos vere occupata per, per nasc. Do, dan comprovia compreno. Bone, though, yes. Uh, so, yeah, another thing that I did a little different um, this time is I went through and I pre-screened um, a lot of the questions. You'll see here most of these are red. Um, I've been trying to get caught up on these hundred. I think I had 600 notifications when I started the other day. I'm down to 428. Um, and some of them are actually fairly old. And so what I've done is I've gone through and I've, I've opened most of these and deleted the ones that were clearly either good answers or um, <laughs> good answers or what was the thing I'm trying to say? Or are clearly just not questions. So hopefully we'll be able to Focus a little more on the questions this time. So let's go here. Um, this is a question. This is a thread that I followed. Why do people hate Esperanto? I thought that was an interesting question. And I just didn't have time to answer it this morning. Oh, shoot. I was going to uh, ooh, close, gonna close that window first of all. Sorry. Um, I was going to... Before I started the live stream, I was going to start some pre-formatted text um, so I could let people know that I was answering their questions and so they, they can come into... Oh, shoot! That's a double shoot. I was going to have a timer going. Well, how am I going to do this? Well, rats. Well, fate lays waste to, waste to the greatest plan. Well... Well, 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 I don't know what to do. All right. Folks, this is what the danger of doing stuff live is. Okay, I don't need to save any of this. I don't care because I didn't... This is part two. It's part three that we're actually watching. Yep. Yep. And the other thing is I have an alarm set to... Dang it. Well, I guess I'll have to do my best here. I'm going to go to my channel. Where's my channel? And I want to see who's in the live stream watching. So uh, I know when I did a live stream this time last time, interesting, it doesn't. Show me my live stream. There it is, live now. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Three watching, okay. Um, let me answer some questions and we'll see where this goes. Um, let's see here. Does anyone know how long I've been doing this? Well, maybe if I click on it, it'll tell me. I'm going to just bring this up and just see if I can salvage this question here. Oh, I got a commercial. 
Nice. <laughs> it's good. I wonder why they're trying to sell me bras. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, does this tell me how many minutes this has been going? Five minutes. Interesting. All right. So if I just add five minutes to my timer, maybe that'll do it. All right. So timer. I'll do stopwatch. Stopwatch. Start. All right. I'm just going to add five minutes there. Hope it works. Okay. Well, thank you for those, the three people watching for bearing with me these five minutes. Let me answer some questions. See, nobody's added. Uh, feel free to add stuff in the chat if you have any comments, questions, observations. Uh, so the question we're going to start with is why do people hate Esperanto? Um, yeah, that's a great question. There's been a lot of great answers over the years. I'm going to see what else people say and uh, maybe circle back and do that. All right. So here's one, uh, Jason. Uh, hopefully Jason will be, oh, you know, Jason likely is, there's a good chance Jason's going to actually be watching this, either live or in the replay. So let me uh, answer this question. He says, why not ambau liain gepatroin versus ambau gepatroin? All right, let's read the sentence. He lost both of his parents when he was young. Li perdis ambau gepatroin, kiam li estis yuna. He lost both parents. Literally, he lost both parents when he was young. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good comment there, Jason. Why not ambau liain gepatroin? Liain ambau. Li perdis ambau gepatroin. I think to me it's just obvious if he lost both parents, he lost both of his parents. Um, and I think, to me, I'm, not, I'm just not comfortable with ambau liain gepatroin. Ambau el liai gepatroin. Well, that's the first question. You know, here's the next problem. Is is actually not liain, it should be siain. Li perdis siain gepatroin when he was young. Um... Yep. All right. So I'm going to see if I can write an answer here. How do I? Oh, shoot. I'm just going to have to go back and do it. Um, you know what? I'm going to do this after the thing. Um, let's put a code word in there. I'm going to say, kvin minut, ses minutoi. All right. And I will go back after this thing and add a more reasonable link. <laughs> All right. Okay, that was that question. Let's see what else do we have here. Yeah. Yeah, so first of all, so by, by, by not putting the pronoun in there, it saves you from deciding whether... It's Leah or Sia. It's just simpler, and it's also sufficient to convey, convey the meaning. So I would prefer Liperdis Ambau Gepatroin. You could say Liperdis Ambau El Sia Gepatroi Ambau, right? Just seems like a very good question. Okay, it's now eight minutes. Here's another question. Um, what does this even mean? Oh, he's not, he's not talking about, he's just talking about this other comment, which is already nonsense. All right. I thought he was talking about the, um, this sentence here, which I also, quite honestly, I'm not sure. Poste ni mal supren iros a la control punto. Right. Why is there a control punto? Why do you have to go down to it? Um, that's a big mystery to me, and I don't know the answer. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. That's... All right. 
Uh, what other questions do we have here that might be fun to look at? I would never say I live... Oh, this is a good one. I live on a dry, lively street. Yep, I wanted to reply to this one. I'm going to call that nine minutes. Yeah, let's call it ten minutes. Waiting for the question to load. Saluton Tomaso. Now, I will go back and change that into something a little more meaningful. All right. You know, okay, actually there's some, well, that's a lot of good discussion here already, so maybe her question's answered. But <clears throat> here's the sentence, Nil lojas en vigla strato. Um, we live on a lively street. And her question is, She said, I would never say I live on a lively street. I would say, it's not really a question, is it? I would say I live on a busy street. Just a very awkward sentence indeed. All right. Well, there's. I think there's a big difference between living on a lively street and living on a busy street. Um, certainly, Nilojas en Vigla Strato is, to me, sounds like a perfectly fine Esperanto phrase that has its own meaning. And it does not mean I live on a busy street, right? It means something a little different. So the question is, what does it mean? Um, why would somebody say this? And to me, vigla means that there's lots of activity, right? Lots of energy. There's something going on there. Um, if you guys, I actually just watched, <laughs> um, I was looking for a specific moment, but I just watched my film, uh, my video about um, uh, a shocking repair, Shoka Riparo when I repaired the light switch on my wall and talked about that all in Esperanto and went through the shopping. and um, I had to cross uh, a six-lane street with cars coming at me. And I would say that's a busy street. I'm not sure it's a Vigla. I would, I'm not sure I would describe that street as Vigla. Right? There are th stores there where things happen, but um, you know, with the exception of cars whipping down the street, there's not a whole lot that goes down there, goes, goes on. Um, Vigla to me means there's a lot of life in the street, right? Lively. Um, and if there's a better way to say that in English, that's, uh, that might be a good question, but, uh, certainly busy is not a better way to say, um, to, in that case, I would, I would, I wouldn't say. All right. Let me close some of these windows so my memory don't run out of memory and let me see who's watching. Um, again, part of the reason I do this live, um, quite honestly, is that it's easy to get a screen capture this way. Um, and oops, they're still trying to show me the bras three watching. All right. So for those three of you who are watching live, if you do have any comments, let me know. Um, otherwise I will keep on recording this and hopefully the replay will be useful to people with questions on the forum. Yeah. That's the other one thing is it's uh, easy, handy, you know, to record this. And then if there anybody, anybody's watching live with a question uh, or a comment, uh, we can always interact that way as well. And this is what I do. I get up in the morning, I make my coffee, and I see if there are any questions on Duolingo. All right, and speaking of which, let's do another one. It's now 13 minutes. Call this 13. In the beginning, it did, didn't it say, Mi esta laboras? All right, I'm going to say almost certainly not, but let's see if we can get some context to that question or comment. Saluto Tommaso 13. All right, in the beginning, didn't it say, it mi esta laboras? All right. I am working. All right, I am working is mi laboras. So mi laboras can also mean I work, All right? So there's a lot of questions in the thread. Um, like this person wanted to say, mi estas laboras. Why is that wrong, All right? And so this is a, this is something that Licio Miller made up. He took a picture of his owl and he says, an Esperanto verb ending in as expresses the meaning of two different verb forms in English. And there's a nice little fuzzy owl there. 
Mi curas can mean I run or I'm running. Mi dormas can mean I sleep, I am sleeping. Mi iras, I go and I'm going. Yep. So that's uh, important to learn when you start out. So to the person who asked, didn't it say, mi esta laboras? I am certain it did not say that. If you do find that text, that word esta, esta as an adjective, ending in A, um, I'm almost certain that's not in the course. Um, if it is, it's clearly an error, and somebody needs to be notified about that. Um, so please report it as a problem. If you like, you can let me know, and I will make sure the right people find out that that's there. Because that's not... Mi esta laboras is not correct. All right. Okay, Tiago Kuhn says, in the mobile app, there isn't an option. Maybe he's on the mobile app. All right, so that's 15 minutes in. Yep, that's probably true. Maybe he's clean. How do I give? Oh, my gosh. Yep, I told you I screened some of these ahead of time. Uh, obviously, I only sort of just screened them to see if they were at all worth clicking on. In this case, I clicked on it, and then I found out it was not worth. I have nothing to add there, so we're going to move on to the next one. Oh, yeah, this is one that I saved. All right, I'm going to say this is 16 minutes in. Maybe by the time I get in, it'll be 16 minutes. Saluton Tomaso 16. Whoops, space 16. All right. This is actually an interesting thread, and I thought it would be fun to discuss this on, on the um, live stream. All right. So here's the sentence. Kio causis la doloron en mi envia maldextra piedo? What caused the pain in your left foot? And a few people thought it was weird that there was not a, a special root that means left. Um, <clears throat> so somebody asks, is there any language in the world that doesn't have a word left that simply calls it the opposite of right? And to my knowledge, there isn't, but my knowledge is limited. But I do know that I routinely talk about turning things clockwise and counterclockwise. <clears throat> I never say clockwise and, I don't know, North Hemisphere Coriolis effect-wise or whatever, right? <clears throat> At the, so, so anyway, that exists sort of as a precedent. precedent. It is possible to talk about directions and then the opposite of the directions. And we don't even, we don't even think about that counterclockwise. <clears throat> um, somebody else said, I too consider this strange. Um, and he talks a little bit about, um, some things, uh, quite honestly, I don't, I don't remember what he's, all the details, but this is, this was my reply. I said, I suspect that, oh, so the question was, why would Esperanto have this? Now, the question of why is Esperanto a certain way is not, I mean, it may be an interesting thing. I think getting too focused on why Esperanto is this way is, it sort of short circuits your learning. Um, a lot of things. You th you, a lot of times we'll find things that, that seem weird to us and we'll say, why is Esperanto this way? It's an artificial language. It's so weird. It's a bad decision. And then you find out that your native language is the one, one language that does it differently and all the other major languages that you might want to learn do it just the way Esperanto does. So that's, that's one thing, right? The other thing is, in the end, Esperanto is an established language, right? So to, so to get focused on why it is a certain way um, puts your attention on things that aren't involved with actually learning the language. Um, not to say that isn't interesting or useful, right? But I uh, kind of jumped in with an opinion on this thought. So the question is, why do why do we say dextre and maldextre for to the uh, on the right and on the left? And I wrote, I I suspect the decision came down to the ubiquity of the word dexter, in in Western language, right? So we uh, and I didn't. So then I actually anticipated the next question, but I decided not to address it in this because I was trying to be brief. Um, and I said, but whatever the reason Esperanto is that way, I, I almost never mix up left and right in Esperanto, I'd, although I do all the time in English. And it's on the contrary, I always get east and west wrong in Esperanto. In fact, in a recent video, I said that I went to East Carolina, I mean, East, East Virginia, or Eastern North Carolina. 
when I really meant Western, and somebody uh, somebody corrected me in the comments. Um, and yeah, I get those words, the Occidento and Oriento. I have to really stop and think um, to keep those words straight. And often I don't stop and think deeply enough, and I get it wrong. Um, in fact, so I said, if only the Esperanto words were Oriente and Maloriente. In fact, part of me wants to do that just to keep from <laughs> saying things wrong. Yes, do mi iros al orienta um, norte carolino post calcaitagoi. Said en la printempo mi iris al mal orienta norte carolino. Yeah. <clears throat> so das go est is the root dexter significant, significantly more ubiquitous than sinister in Western language. So yeah, is the is it really more common, right? Um, by the way, my wife asked me this morning, she said, what does ubiquitous mean? And I said, well, it comes from the Latin word ubique, which means everywhere, uh, which comes, which is also related to the Latin word ubi, which means where, right? So you want to know where it is? It's ubique, right? Ubi, ubi is where, ubique is everywhere, which reminds me of another, of a button that I have that says semper ubi sub ubi which in Esperanto would be chiam kie sub kie, or always wear underwear. But yeah, the question is whether dexter is more common than sinister. And I think it is, right? So we know sinister, it's certainly as an English speaker, sinister um, means, you know, bad tempered, right? Or, you know, not trustworthy, evil, right? Um but I, off the top of my head, I cannot think of any other word with sinister in it. Of course, that's that could it doesn't mean that it's more common. But from my point of view, in, in terms of being able to think of things, um, I can't think of very many words that have sinister in there as a root. But dexter, right? Um, we have dexterity. Um, huh. I thought we. I thought I was going to come up with a lot of examples. I can't think of dexterity is the only one that comes to mind. Um, hmm, I'm going to have to think of some more examples. Ambidex ambidextrous. Ambidextrous means that you have both right hands, right? Uh, so dexterity and ambidextrous certainly come to mind. Um, yeah, so I guess when I update the link in here, I'll also just do a quick search to see if I can come up with um, some more hard and fast details there. All right. Hopefully that was interesting for Das Go. All right, once again, no new comments. That's fine. And for watching. All right, so if you're watching, somebody apparently has joined. Uh, make sure to leave a comment, say hello. Uh, the plan for today, if you've just joined, I'm going to do some more... Um, I'm going to do some more questions just from the forum, from my notifications in the email. All right. Let's get another one and call that one 23 minutes. 23 minutes. Okay. Yep. People are going to wonder why I'm doing this. Saluton Tommaso 23. I'm going to go back and search for that. Saluton Tommaso. And then update that to a link. Hopefully to the hopefully it'll come right around to this point of the video. And we can we can uh, talk, uh, talk about that here. All right. So I am going through my notifications. And here's another one. So Reflexive pronouns only apply to third-person pronouns. All right, so let's take a look at the sentence here. Uh, my grandmother and her sisters spoke Hungarian. Mia avino kaishiai fratinoi parolis la hungaran. All right, so the question must have been, why is it not siai? And the answer is, actually, let me say this. So the, the, the pronoun si, spelled S-I, in Esperanto is called the third person person reflexive and this is one of those few cases where i think the knowing what the, the, the grammatical term for it 
is helpful, right? So third person, um, I is the first person you would have in any conversation. You, the listener, is the second person you would have in any conversation. And third person refers to anybody else, right? So third person would be he, she, it, they, or anybody who could be referred to as he, she, it, or they. That's, that's third person. Uh, third person, and then reflexive means it reflects back onto the subject. So the one thing that we see here is that mia avino kai shiai fratino, right? It can't be sia because the sisters are part of the subject. They're the ones that are actually doing the speaking. So it can't, ref it can't, it can't reflect back onto itself. So C or any derivative of C cannot be... Um, cannot be part of the subject, right? And so, so actually, this is interesting. C and other forms of the third person reflexive refer to the subject and therefore cannot be part of the subject. And so this person comes in here And he verified it. Somebody else says, thanks. This has confused me for a while. As I now understand reflexive pronouns, they only refer to third-person pronouns. And so would not apply in this instance anyway. Actually, um, it could apply in this instance. All right. So let's take another look at it, right? So third person is he, she, it, or they, right? So um, I could say, Mia Avino parolis la hungaran al siai infanoi, right? And that would be a, a, an okay use of si because it would be referring back to the subject, which in my hypothetical sentence is just the grandmother. Or mia avino parolis la hungaron, la hungaron kun siai fratinoi. All right, that can refer back to the subject. Um because the subject in that case would just be Mia Avino. But yeah, it's definitely, Mia Avino is definitely third person. Because we're talking about um, the grandmother. So hopefully that clarifies that, right? So the, when we say that it can only be used in third person, what I would say is we can't say, Mi parolas la, Mi parolis esperanton, Kun siai in finally, right? It would have to be kun miai because mi mi is first person. Yeah, so mi v and then any plural form. So ni and a plural v would be first or second person. So basically, anything that's not mi, ni, or v would be third person. Hopefully that helped. look for another question all right so 20 i forgot to start my timer so i got to add five minutes to the time on my timer hopefully that'll line up correctly so we're at uh let's say 24 minutes so that's 20 or 23 minutes so that's 28 minutes i have another one actually i see remember this was a good question i don't remember what it is so i'm gonna say salute on tomaso 28 and then go back and change that with a link to this uh salute on Tomaso 28, and then later on replace that with a um, a link to this point in the video so we can see what's going on here. In Finland, people speak Finnish and Swedish. In Finland, only parolas la finan kai la svedan. So he says, oh yeah, I'm curious as to why people is described by oni on some occasions and homoi in others. In Finland, oni parolas la finnan kai la svedan. All right. So the question is, why are we translating oni as the people here? Uh, and I've seen a lot of similar questions, right? Why? Do, um, what does oni mean? So oni, if you look in a dictionary, is often translated as one. Right, one does not simply walk into Mordor. Um, right, but a lot of times in common, normal, informal English, we might we wouldn't say you know, one does not eat 
spaghetti with their fingers. One does not eat spaghetti with one's fingers, right? You say, you don't eat spaghetti with your fingers. And when we say you, in that case, we mean people in general. Or we could say, you know, in their family, or they don't do that there, right? They don't do that there. So they, or that's what they say, right? A lot of times can, we can also say they, and we don't mean Ili. We're just talking about sort of people in general don't do that, right? So in Finland, they speak Finnish and Swedish, I think would be a perfectly um, acceptable translation. Or in Finland, one speaks Finnish and Swedish would be an acceptable translation. And what else? In Finland, you speak... Finnish, and Swedish. That's a little bit weird, but you, I can imagine that, right? Well, in, in America, you speak English. In Finland, you speak, right? Um, you speak Finland. It's a little, it's a little, in this particular context, I would, probably would say they. In Finland, they speak Finnish. Um, so the next thing to keep in mind is that the Esperanto sentences in the Duolingo course are considered the um, the original, right? The, the, that's where it comes from. So anything else is just a translation. So they came up with this sentence to describe how Oni works, almost certainly. Uh, maybe also to introduce um, Finlando or La Fina, Fina, or if we prefer La Suoma, so we don't have to pronounce that double N. So that's what that sentence is for. So the question is, how do we say that in English? And I think it's okay to translate it as, in Finland, people speak Finnish and Swedish, because that's kind of what we're getting at. So the question is, why is it described by Oni in some cases and Homoi in others? Okay, so my first thought is, I'd have to see those other sentences, but my first thought is Homoi is probably in the original sentence, and then we're just seeing it as people as a translation of that. So somebody wanted to come up with a sentence and chose the word only, chose the word homeway based on what they wanted to express. Um, there's a little difference in, in nuance, right? Um, in the right context, homeway could mean human beings instead of animals, right? But yeah, I, I think it's, I'm gonna just say in short, it's just preference although I would like to see more specific examples before committing hard and fast to that. All right, let's look at another question. It's going to be 32 minutes. Por que estas ne esas la objeto? All right, let's find out what the question is here. You know, I'm going to call this 33 minutes. To ma so. So wait, this is what I'm doing here. Just I'm putting in a word that I can go back and search a little later, so I can put it put in a link because I forgot to prepare the link before the call, rather than typing out an answer to the question live, which I've done in the past too, and it may start doing again. Um. All right, again, we don't have anybody chatting, but if you have anything to say, it says three people watching. I don't know if it's the same three people. If you've just joined, uh, please feel free to say hello in the chat. I'm um, just uh, going through something that I do on a normal basis. Check the forums for questions that need answers and answering them. All right. Por quio, quioli estas, ne estas objecto de la verbo sci. Let's find out. Mi ne scias, quioli estas. So the question appears to be, why is there no accusative on there? Mi ne scias. If the question is, why is there no N? And my first question is, where would you put it, right? Because there's no real, you can't, put an, you can't put an accusative on a phrase. Um, we could conceivably argue that this sentence is mines tion como quioliestas. 
Um, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty common in Esperanto to have um, a verb that can you often take a direct object and then have a dependent phrase sort of acting like the direct object. So I would say that Kiwi is actually is actually the object of CS. It's just there's no no need or way to to mark it with an end ending. So if that was your question, hopefully that was that clarified that up. If not, leave a comment and I will try to clarify it again. All right, 35 minutes. Oh yeah. This might be a fun one. Um <clears throat> This is a, I even forgot what the thread was about. Person wants to know if I speak interlingua. Si. Io parla interlingua, said io ne parla bone, ba ben, io ne parla ben. Uh, io, io ne saipe pa parla interlingua. Eh, <clears throat> how do you say? Eh, eh, eh consequente. <laughs> you know, hablo bien. All right, anyway, that's all I have to say about that. I will go back and <clears throat> say something a little more intelligent with a link to the video there. Yeah, I actually um, had spent some fair amount of time learning to to write interlingua, mostly by reading responses from people who speak interlingua. Um, I'm not very excited about. I, I mean, I think it's a, it's a fun language, but interlinguas tend to rub me the wrong way. Salivanto, dan compro via respondo mi neniam lernistion chuci estas oficiala regulo. Actually, I've already replied to that one. Um, I won't put a link in there, but um, I'm pretty sure I saved this because I thought this would be interesting to talk about. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is... Um, now, I'm not able to play this sentence, which is one of the frustrating things. There used to be a play button right around here, but a lot of these sentences don't have play buttons. Um, and Kovas says... La parolanto pronuncias dungis, excuse me, dungis, and sata dungis. Dungis is the second one. Dungis is the first. So I said dungis is generally an acceptable and common alternative to dungis. The most important thing is to pronounce the G. Never say dungis. Put another way, the combination ing and Esperanto can be pronounced like the ing in finger, but not like the ing in singer. And he says, Salivanto, dan compro la respondo, chuji esas oficiala regulo. So I don't know that it's an official rule in any sense, but I replied with a quote from uh, Bertilo in, Pomo, in Pomego. No estas denta nasa consonanto mm, right you close your tongue near your teeth and the air comes out your nose mm. g contrastas en la alia nasa consonanto mm. q estas lipa mm. right you close your lips mm, and the air comes out your nose kiam n staras antau gingiva au vela sono right so gingiva is your um, I think you're around. Well, it means it means your your gums <laughs> is literally literally what kingivo kingivo means, or ve velo is the um, soft palate, as I understand it. Oni emma shanji and gingivan sonon malgranda differenzo. Oh, excuse me. Mm, 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 mm. Or vela. Mm, 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 mm. Granda differenzo. Por fazi ligi la el parolan. Tranchi, manji, longa. Tranchi, 
I ask the tranzi. Right? That sort of, that CH sound, that, that C with a hat is pronounced in the, in the middle of your tranzi. Right? So you, people tend to put the N, the tongue, in preparation for making, for making the ch. So, official rule or not, um, it's pretty, pretty normal. All right, I'm going to take a break from answering these questions, and I'm going to take a walk upstairs, and I have to wake up Logan. But I can come back down and answer some more questions. And uh, here we go. Oh, I got some comments for some people. Uh, Jason, by the way, mi laboras nun, sed mi auscultas. Bone. Um, mi respondis al uno el viai demandoi, kai do mi povos ti provos meti ligilon al tio. Do, se vi povos respecti la aferon pli, bon, pli poste, kiam vi povos atenti la respondon, tio estus tute en ordo. Logano filo, vi devas vekigi por via rendezvuo kun la curacisto. Bon, ya está, li habas rendezvuon post uno horo. Kai li devas vekigi. Yes, bone. Kai en alia comento de Voluntulo Esperanto. Hello, saluton, do Voluntulo Esperanto. Tio sos interesa nomo. Do prikio vi voluntulas, kai chu vi faras filmetoin, chu indas controli vian canalon por specti ion. <coughs> bone, se dan con perspecti, kai... Yes, bone, o ses personoi, do versione plida personoi spectas, do dan con perspecti. Um, la celo hodia estas simple respondi al demando e el foru forumo. Kai mi ne... Mi faras tion heime sola, um, ser hodia mi decidis fari tion kiel vivan el sendon. Alia afero estas que en la venonta semainoi, en la venonta semaino mi estos en nask, do mi faros viva en el sendo en, en esperanto en quiam mi alvenos. Que post quiam mi revenos al rochestro, eble mi de nove, povos fari uh, muntita en fil, fil, filmeto en. Pone. What is eaten, I mean? All right, I saved this one for a reason. I don't remember what that reason was. The other problem here, 37. 42. The other thing I meant to do is that before the call, I wanted to make up a link so I could put in direct links here, and I forgot to do that, so I'm going to have to just to go back here. This is just so I can search for it. And I remember it was 42 minutes into the live stream. <clears throat> All right. So Jacob, oh, he left a lot of comments. All right, let's start at the beginning. Okay, Ooh, nice, another long thread with lots of discussion. Now, one thing I'd like to see is before people to read the comments. A lot of times people leave comments and then their answer is actually already in there. La cucon mangis niai collegoi. Our colleagues ate the cake. All right. So let's find the recent question. Uh, this person says, ha ha, trick question, had me fooled. The cake ate our colleagues is what I thought. Yep, that's what the accusative is there for. Um... You would not use this word order unless there was special emphasis, right? Unless there was um, some reason that I try to emphasize the cake or the colleagues, right? Trying to call to attention who did what. Um, all right. So. The chicken ate our colleagues. <laughs> I don't understand. Anyway. Where's the, there it is, Jacob. Would it be better to say la collegoi mangis la cucon than the meaning is clearer? Or ni ai collegoi mangis la cucon, la collegoi. I am, oh, the cake is eaten by our colleagues should also be allowed. 
Yeah. Yep. I think so. Um, a lot of these things, the only thing you can do is if you put in what you think is your best answer and you get marked wrong, the only thing you can do is uh, use the report a button. Um, use the report a problem button and send it to the course administrators for them to decide whether it should be added as an alternative. Um, in my experience, they're pretty flexible about that sort of thing. And they'll most likely add it. Um, that said, the next time you see the sentence, you probably could also just as easily remember what it is and just put in the answer that you think it's the system is most likely to accept. Um, that's what I would recommend. If you know that a certain answer is a certain way, then put that in. And if you get to the point where you've memorized the whole course, then it's time to move on and do something else. Yep. Okay. Same six people, same comments. Bonnet. All right. I don't know if I'll have time a little later. Um, I'm kind of really just doing this at random, quite honestly. I'm having... There's a lot going on this week. It's uh, the end of finals week for the kids, so I've been driving kids back and forth to school and getting ready for Esperanto events and coming back from Esperanto events and scouting campouts and this sort of thing. So my schedule is all turned around. But as I can, it occurs to me, it might be nice to just get on and show people what I do. And that is, I like to come out here and answer questions. Because otherwise, these questions don't get answered. Um, I do know that there's a lot of people, you know, actually, we'll, I, will, I will show this. Because um, I really do appreciate the people, the effort people have been doing. And, um, right, so when you come out to the forum, you can look at the popular, um, popular threads. You can look at which might be nice to in a, in a in a busier forum you know if you just want to see the top threads you know the esperanto forum is slow enough that you can read just about everything oh speaking of which altura rencontijo if you guys are in the northeast of the united states or can get to the northeast of the united states for columbus day weekend october 12th to 4th I would strongly encourage you to come to Are. It is my favorite Esperanto event. I've been going um, just about every year. I had missed one year um, for, well, no, that's a long story, but um, I had to miss one year. But for the last, as long as I've been speaking Esperanto, I've gone to this event every year. Um, oftentimes, it's the biggest, um, best attended event in North America. This year, it's not going to be NASC. It's uh, without a question going to be because it's the 50th anniversary of NASC. But, um, yeah, it's time to sign up for that, book your room, and that sort of thing. So it definitely pays the plan ahead, uh, especially since the room, the space does fill up. And especially this year, I'm, uh, this year I'm expecting it to fill up. So if you're looking for a chance to um, hang out and speak some Esperanto and... Uh, improve your fluency, and finally take that plunge. Now's the time to start making your plans. All right. So I, would, but I wanted to show you the sentences tab. And if you guys are starting to feel a little confident in your Esperanto, this would be a good place to come in and jump in. Um, the sentences tab, unfortunately, it shows the new threads first. All right. So if there's an old thread that has questions on it, most by this time, most of the threads are old. It's not going to show up here, uh, which is why I have, follow so many threads and get them in, in, as emails. But this is one way that I would encourage people to help out. And since I've been, I've, I've been seeing a lot more activity lately, right? I see a lot of these things have two comments on there, six comments. This one's just one. So either it's a question that's not answered or it's a wisecrack that somebody um, chose not to answer. All right, so occasionally when I, when I have time, um, and at this point, I'm about a month behind here. Um, I go in there and just make sure that everything has an answer and that the answers people have given are um, reasonably true. And they've gotten a lot better. When I first got on the forum 
uh, the people that were answering the questions were really just somebody who had been through the course about five minutes longer than the person who had been in there before. So if you guys would like to help out other learners that way, I think that would be great. And again, if you come, if you do that and you find a question you don't know the answer to, don't feel, you can either leave it or you can uh, reach out, reach out to me. All right. There's Logan's second call. I'm going to let him sleep for 10 more minutes. I think that's a good idea. All right. Let's answer some more questions. Actually, before I do, uh, so 50 minutes. No new chat messages. Thanks, five people watching. Uh, again, if you're just joining, the plan for the day is just to keep on answering forum member uh, forum questions. If you have any questions, put it in the chat. I'll see if I can answer it. One just cleaned the house. Oh, look at this. This ties into the other question. Right? Oni jus purigis la domon. You know what? I'm not going to leave a link here. But let's take a look at this because it's relevant to what we were just talking about. Oni jus purigis la vendotan domon. Vendota means the house is going to be sold, right? I probably would have translated this as the house that's for sale. And I may, 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 may have even commented about that. They just cleaned the house, right? The reason why we say oni is because we're just sort of saying it happened, right? We're not really focused on who did it. Um, we're not saying that, uh, you know, do you see John, Mary, and, and Jack there? Ili jus purigis la domon, right? We're just saying it just it happened, right? Somebody cleaned the house. The house has, the house has been cleaned. Um, and one nice thing about Esperanto is there's lots of ways to avoid the passive voice. In fact, yep, I left this comment. I would have said they just clean the house that is for sale. And this person says oni can mean ili, right? And I had this sort of in mind. Um, oh, I know this guy. Um, <laughs> talk to him. It's one of my students on italki. Um, oh, by the way, I'm a italki. I'm a teacher. So if anybody wants one-on-one -on -one Esperanto lessons, feel free to reach out about that as well. Um, but yeah, oni can mean ili, no. But they mean different things in English, right? That's what they tell me they mean anyway. Right? And I was trying to be a little circular there. All right. So somebody else asked. I'm a bit confused by this. I feel like I'm missing something. I don't see anything in this sentence that implies they. Why wouldn't they just, one just say ili? Ili means they, as in those people over there that I'm talking about. Oni means they, as in that's what they say. More literally, more literally it's one, as in one doesn't walk into Mordor. And the, convert, and the thread goes on. But, yeah, so this is kind of what I was getting at here. Um, the Esperanto sentence is the main sentence. So when they were, when the course authors were... Um, writing the sentence, they weren't thinking about how to say it in English. They were just thinking about how how do I, I have a word in Esperanto that I need to teach. What's a sentence that illustrates that word or grammar point? Um, and then, so it may have been Vendota that they were trying to teach, or it may have been Oni, right? It could have been anything. Um, oni jus purigis la domon. Terrific, perfectly normal thing to say in Esperanto. The house has been clean, right? The um, question is how to say that in English. And one possible translation is they just clean the house. Um, I know it's frustrating when you're going through here and being graded by a computer. Um, I'm actually curious whether these people who are asking these questions got marked wrong or whether they're just joining the discussion and had more questions but anyway i'm speaking of moving on i'm going to move on to another sentence all right so we're now at 54 minutes in if kurats oh good i was hoping this one would be answered because this is i'm going to answer this one this is a fun one because i've even seen this and published materials. Oh, dang it. All right, this is the other thing I don't like about the forum is these new threads often don't show all the comments. 
All right. So if I sort by newest, is it going to show it to me? No, it doesn't. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type this question out. If Kuratsas is treating, what is curing? All right. See also about 50 minutes in. Saluto Tommaso. Hopefully that'll do it. Um, if Kuratsas is not 50, about 55 minutes in. All right, if, if Kuratsas is treating, what is curing? Okay. Um, every day he, he treats about 15 patients. So Kuratsisto is not a healer, right? A Kuratsisto is not a curer. A Kuratsisto is somebody who treats people. Um, so, right, if you have an illness... They, you, they treat it, but you might not actually get better, right? So for health, for curing, I would say um, resanigi. I'll just type that in. Resanigi. Literally, to make healthy again. Yep. All right. Actually, that might be a good place to stop. Um, let me just take one more look at the chat. Again, if uh, check out the links in the description to the original um <laughs> uh yes brian um yeah so check out the links to the original um original marathon video here if i can i will come back later this afternoon or evening uh before we hit the road tomorrow or maybe the friday morning to nask and uh yeah so let me respond to Brian. Uh, mi iam respondas al demandoi, kai ofte esperas ke miai respondoi estas justai. Yes, kai efektive mi vidas multaj el viai respondoi, kai mia opinias ke ili estas bonai. Uh, mi rekonas vian bildon, mi ne memoras ĉu vi uzas la saman nomon en Duolingo, se mi certe rekonas vian bildon. Um, kai se estas problemo pri la mi foje aldonas, ĉu ne? Um, se iu demandas pri prepozicio kaj uh, la akuzativo post prepozicio, mi tre ofte ŝatas meti la ligilon al uh, keys to understanding Esperanto prepositions, kaj tio estas artikolo kion mi verkis antaŭ pluraj monatoj. Mi um, estas yes, facile aldoni tiujn informojn, sed uh, se la respondo estas bona, mi nenion diras, Se mi volas aldoni au, au correcti ion, mi faras tion. Do se vi, um, kai efektive, kiel mi diris, mi, um, mi estas malfrua je unu monato nun, do antau en la pasinta e tagoi mi iomete um, controlis la malnova in afisho in de antau du monatoi. Uh, yes, do mi opinie, do vi ai respondo, yes, as bona. Kai play parte la demando, yes, as vere simple, ai chunei. Oni volas si i kiel uzi la akusativon, kiel uzi si, chune, kai tiu esas do, uh, se vi uzas duolingon, kai spektas mian kanalon jam unu jaron, au, et, au serioze lernas dum ses monatoj, vi certe jam konas la bazon, kai povas respondi al tiu i demandoj. Do mi dankas pro via laboro, kai tiu multe helpas, um, Tio sparas laboron por mi, kai tio helpas al, al lernantoj. Do bone, kai do atendu la, la vivain el sendoin pri nask en la venonta semajno, kai en la venonta horoi au tagoi estos pli da respondoi de Duolingo. Kai tio estas ĉio por nun, ĉar mi devas iri kun uh, al kuracisto kiu efektive nek resanigos, nek kuracos <laughs> mian filon, sed tio estas alia afero por alia tago. Gis reviro.